Corpus Spy Missions. We'll be covering each data vault type that can be found in Corpus Spy Missions, and we'll top it off with a Corpus Console Hacking Guide. There are other subjects that'll help you with completing these objectives, such as Warframes and their respective tips and tricks, as well as gear and other equipment benefits, but those were covered in my Spy Mission Type Overview video, so please watch that too. And since I've yet to witness any naming convention for these data vaults, I've decided to create my own. If you don't like them, I just... I guess I just want you to know that I really think that sucks. So the boxing ring. Anexi is approaching these vaults with Ember and an Amprex. This should make the rooms and NPC patrols easier to understand since teleport and stealth aren't factored in. Only one of the doors, either the one to your left or the one to your right, will be open to start with. In this data vault, the side that you want to get to is the opposite of the one that's currently open. It's also important to remember which side you had to take at this point. So later on when I say, if you went right, or if I say, if you went left, this is the point in time I'm referring to. So go through your open door, clear any security that's in the way, and go to the bottom of the stairs. At the bottom, you should see a hole in the wall directly up and ahead of where you're facing. You'll see that hole even if you went left instead. Go ahead and bullet jump and go into it. From this vent shaft, you can look into the area which gives this data vault its name because it looks like a giant boxing ring. Now, in that ring of lasers are a lot of enemies. Oftentimes, one is a nullifier. You really don't want to make a lot of noise here. He'll make that bubble and then it gets to be a real problem. Your goal is to jump into a vent just like the one that you're in, but on the opposite wall. If you're using stealth, and you have enough time on your stealth, you can just bullet jump over. But if you're not, you'll have to remove anything that can raise the alarm if it sees you jumping overhead, including those guys down there in that boxing ring. You can use AoE kill tactics or a strong killing weapon, but silent. Make sure to destroy cameras too, including the one in the doorway on that adjacent wall. Once you're on the other side, go into the vent and head to the opening in the adjoining room. Take a short look for any patrols or cameras and handle them if needed then drop in. There should be another hole in the wall under the stairs. Follow it. If you went right like Anexi did in this video, you can go through this vent and you can safely hack the data vault console, but if you went left, you'll have to do one extra hack to make your way into the room that has the data vault console inside of it. So if you aren't using stealth and you killed everything in the boxing ring as was recommended earlier, this isn't a big deal. Just go through, hack into the room, and then go into the room and finish up. If you are using stealth, I assume this means that the mobs in the boxing ring are still alive and you need to have enough time on your stealth to hack your way into the room without being seen. Especially as Loki, you'll need to mind how much time ha you have left on your current stealth. The Horseshoe. This puzzle is all about taking out one camera silently, and then the rest is either patience or familiarity with the timing. There's no need to rush. Uh, aim gliding is important here too, since you want to land either just in front of or just past these laser walls that move up and down, since there's stable ground in those locations. Otherwise, there are just a lot of lasers on the ground you don't want to touch. Watch the laser walls, and notice that there is always an opening either above or below the lasers. For the first one, a bunny hop is really all you need. For the second, wait until it starts to go up and then glide through. Hop the last laser rug before reaching the U-turn and at this point you can safely regroup. Now, you can sprint under the third laser wall and the fourth laser wall, but the fourth one is located just past another array of lasers on the floor, so you want to take a second on the other side of laser three, wait until laser four is moving up and then jump and aim glide for that little opening beneath them. If you're using Loki, consider using Decoy and Switch Teleport to bypass all of these lasers. Ivara can bypass the lasers just by going through as long as she has the Infiltrate Augment mod and Prowl. Or if you're on Limbo, you can just get in the rift and walk through them. The Hippie's Doorway the best approach for this puzzle is to be aggressive. As soon as the console's hacked, you need to be able to recognize this one. So take a good look at this frame. There's a laser curtain moving to the left, and then a glass wall opposite you, and then a door to your right. As soon as you see this, understand that you need to move right now. Step into the puzzle room and wait for the laser curtain that just went left. 
It'll come back and as soon as it goes to your right, you need to be moving toward the laser curtain that's coming straight at you headlong. All right, hold here. See this pillar at the corner of the two walls? The lasers coming at you will stop there and then start going the other way. You want to be clipping their heels when they do that until you can sneak into this little divot that's the, the last divot to your left on this wall. The lasers will hit a corner soon and then go back the other way and they'll barely miss you because you're just to the side of them. Now we have another set of lasers that'll come from behind that corner. Start toward this corner and once the lasers go past, run in. There'll be a grate on the far wall which you can shoot with a silent gun or you can just take it out with your melee once you get up on it. All right, now you've done the hard part. It's much easier from here. Proceed into the chute and jump straight up. At the top, turn around and silently remove another grate. As you step through that grate opening, there are some objects blocking the view of another camera here to your left. So be mindful of where the camera is looking. You can swing your camera view around without making your character visible and you can take it out while it's not looking. There are two openings in this wall now. Sometimes there are grates in them, sometimes not. It doesn't matter. Take the one out quietly and you'll see a catwalk that you can use to step out. Check for any cameras on the upper deck that'll see you though. If you're not stealthed, you can angle yourself so that you can take out the camera below or you can just drop through the opening in those moving lasers down to the left and quickly skirt around the data vault console. The camera won't be able to see you there. It may be the case that you are right now staring at this puzzle because you opened it, then looked up this guide, and you're now out of sync with the laser patrols in the beginning. If that's the case, just keep these things in mind. There are divots in the wall throughout, and you'll just have to be judicious and patient. Alternatively, if you have done the War Within, you can also use Void Dash to get through the lasers. If you haven't done the War Within, don't look that up, it's a spoiler. The High Wire Act. This puzzle's less about memorization and more about handling specific concepts. First, stay on the catwalks until you're above the Data Vault console. There will always be either an opening in the wall leading to another catwalk, or at least a busted vent that you can remove silently and then you can achieve the same thing. Stay vigilant for any cameras though, and take them out before proceeding into any new rooms. Sometimes you won't even be able to walk up to the hole in the wall, so you'll need to aim glide into that hole and then be prepared to shoot any cameras that you see once they come into view. Plinko. Enter the elevator, trigger it, and turn around. There will be two grates in the wall. One of them will be open. You'll see them roughly two seconds after starting the elevator. Uh, you can jump and aim glide into the open one. You can follow this vent into an open room with several levels. And at the center of this open room, there's a vertical shaft full of lasers. You want to get into that shaft from the top. But first, um, on your current level, there will be a corpus NPC that is standing near a console and he can set off these alarms. You won't see him at first though because he's around the corner. If there are cameras, try to remove them and any patrolling NPCs before trying to get a peek at this dude. Now, once that's handled, sneak out to where you can see him and remove him. At this point, you can bullet jump up to the top of the shaft in the center and approach the hole in the top. You can drop onto the first catwalk and start assessing the patterns of the lasers below now. This part's as simple as taking it one level at a time, finding the hole in the laser blanket and dropping through to the next catwalk. Once you reach the bottom, you'll be able to perform the final hack. If you are seen from the outside of the shaft or you accidentally trip a laser on the way down, just aim for an opening through the entire laser system and drop all the way through. It doesn't matter now, so you can set them off. If you've gotten this far without starting the alarms, you'll probably be alright as long as you're not killed at the console. As you leave this one, don't go through the grates in the wall. Use the doors. The grates can lead to dead ends, which isn't a big deal. It's just annoying and wastes time. The last one is the DMV. This one always starts off with a camera facing opposite you and usually a corpus NPC patrolling from either left to right or right to left. Remove both of those and sneak to the left. Wait for the laser gate to go down. It's not terribly forgiving in terms of timing though, so be quick. Also, don't step in too far or the camera to your left will see you and go ahead and take out that camera. Now you have another laser gate to go through. 
You want to be near it when it goes down and then bolt through. Immediately get into the vent chute in front of you. You don't want to be seen. Follow it until you make a turn and then take your first right, hop up, and get out onto the catwalk. The final data vault console is down below, but there's usually going to be a nullifier down there, so quickly and quietly take them out. Then go ahead and hack. Hacking corpus consoles. First, you gotta be aware that you can craft ciphers, which are an immediate and cheap way to hack, but it's a good idea to get to where you can hack any consoles in the game. Historically, ciphers weren't allowed in raids, and currently they're still not allowed in sorties. In summary, sometimes ciphers are not allowed, and you don't want to be caught with your pants down. I guess that depends on your company, but anyway, here are the facts and the steps that I use when hacking corpus consoles. First, run a search on Google for hack the corpus, or go to the URL in the description. It's a website designed for you to just sit there and practice hacking corpus consoles, and I learned on this thing. I spent maybe 15 minutes at most, and this was years ago, practicing on this, and I've never had an issue with hacking since. I'd argue that it can even get to be more difficult than the hacks that are in the game itself, so it's excellent prep. But in the interest of not being too lazy, I'd also like to take a second to kind of try and explain how this works. So the first goal is to make it so that every line that you see on the hack ends on a node. There'll be no open lines without a node. Remember that the fire button will spin it clockwise and the aim button will spin it counterclockwise. In the late game, the entire pattern of hexagons is filled with pieces of the puzzle that need to be rotated. Until then, the puzzle's pretty easy to think through, but once you're dealing with a full puzzle pattern, you'll need more of a method. That method is resolve the outer perimeter first and then spin the middle to win. As you can see, this method narrows down your goal at the start to just resolving the outer pieces. At the start, you can totally ignore the center. Look at the types of hexagons that appear on the fringes of the pattern. They essentially come in three meaningful types. The types that have two pieces of pi, the types with one, and the types with a single line. That's it. That's all you care about. So. If there are three lines, or if it has two lines that are at an obtuse angle, for your purposes, those are the same thing. You don't care. They have two pieces of pi that would fit in them, and then there's a middle line, which is imaginary or not. Focus only on the parts that have those two pieces of pi and spin them until the meeting point of the two pieces is facing the middle of the console hack. Skip the other hexagon types until these are all situated. Once that's done, you'll be dealing with the single pi pieces. Look for the obvious ones, where there's only one line coming from a neighboring and resolved outer edge piece and that they can connect to. Make sure that one line is facing the middle and the other is connecting to the piece on that outside edge. Now for the single line pieces, connect them to any outside edge lines that need a complement, just like me. Once this is done, you can be fairly sure that the middle piece just needs to spin until it connects them all. Thank you, and don't let your grandma bite you.